Do you want ideas for saving time while still making beautiful cards? Hi, I'm Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm going to help you make the most of your crafty supplies and time. So let's get making. Today I am going to use a series of tips that will help you save time in your craft room and make a complete card so you can see how these tips come together and make fast but beautiful handmade cards. Tip number one for saving time is to make your card bases ahead of time. I have shown this before on my channel, but I use A2 size cards. I make them all from cardstock. This is accent opaque, 100 pound cardstock available on Amazon, and that's what I use for my card bases. There's a lot of other great choices out there, but I will take one sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. I will cut it in half with my paper trimmer at the five and a half mark on the 11 inch side. Then I would cut a whole bunch of those at one time, make a stack of the half sheets, often way bigger than that. Then I'm going to score them all in a series. So my paper score here, which I don't believe is still available, but I'll link you to something similar, has even a mark for A2, which is four and a quarter if you're scoring on the eight and a half inch side. If you like to make a different kind of card, say you like to make slimline or A7 five by seven cards, you could still do this, but it's not going to come as perfectly out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. Also, even faster would, to be, would be to buy your cards ahead of time. You can buy packs of note cards online or in your local craft store. And then once I have scored down the center, I fold it and I use my uh, Teflon bone folder to press along the side. Say you didn't have a scoring board, you know, maybe you're kind of new to crafting and you don't have all the tools that are out there. Highly recommend a scoring board. They usually come with a cheap bone folder with it. You can get that. You don't need the fancy, more expensive Teflon bone holder, bone folder, but you really can just fold your cardstock in half. It does not look as neat, but it will get you there. You know, use your finger to press it, maybe your nail if you don't think your nail polish will come off on it, and you get about the same result. Tip number two for saving time is to follow templates or sketches. I know this isn't for everyone. I know you've probably heard some of these tips before, or some of them are not for you. Please skip whichever ones are not for you, and maybe see if one of the other ones is a great time saver for you. Also, if that's your favorite part of the process, don't skip it. If you really like coming up with card layouts, great, please do that. But if you'd rather just have an idea of how to put your paper together, sketches and templates could be great. My templates at JessCrafts.com tell you how to cut the paper and then show you a sketch for how to assemble it. They're for six by six paper, six by eight, eight and a half by 11, 12 by 12. I have slimline cards, mini slimline cards, five by seven. There's a lot over there. So you can hopefully find a template that will work for you but this can save you a lot of time if this is not the part of card making that you're most interested in being creative with and you can then take all that time and energy and put it into the other part of your card project. Today I'm going to use a 6x6 no scrap template that will make three A2 size cards. All of my templates are no scrap so they show you how to cut the paper without making any scraps. But of course there are many other sketches out there and I'll link a few in the video description and they just still give you an idea for the general place that you'd put things on your cards. Tip number three, use pattern paper. If you love pattern paper, like I do, it can add a lot to your card without requiring you to do a lot of the work. However, if you like making alcohol ink backgrounds or blended backgrounds or coloring Copic scenes, I've done it all, I love it, it's fun too but using pattern paper can go a lot faster, especially with something like a no scrap template or a card sketch. So I have this single sided pattern paper from Basic Gray. This is some super old pattern paper, but that's the beauty of it. It never goes bad, it never goes out of style, it doesn't dry up or any of that. So I'm going to be using pattern paper on my card today to save time. Tip number four, is to use pre-printed images. I know this isn't for everyone, again, but maybe you took the time to do a beautiful 
alcohol ink or blended background, but you don't love to color. You don't like to stamp little images and color them in. And you can get layering stamps that do a lot of the work for you, or you can get printable images. These are from a site called creativefabrica.com. I like to use them, especially if I'm making like a lot of cards and trying to use up a whole six by six pattern paper pack, or I really just need to get through my stash a little faster. So I have some butterflies, but they have so many images out there. You can also get um, similar images from Etsy. And I can then pick an image and create a focal point on my card quickly and easily. If you're wondering like more detail how to go from this template into a card, I have tutorials for many, well for all, of the sketches and templates over at JessCrafts.com. They each have a link to the video that goes with them. Bonus tip, money saving though. Not so much time. I'm going to use this scrap of cardboard for my foam tape. It's actually slower than using foam tape because I have to cut it to the size and foam tape is already sort of, could be cut into little squares or something. And I have to add the adhesive. So sometimes there's that balance between saving money and saving time. Tip number five for saving time when you're making cards is to use pre-printed sentiments instead of stamping your sentiment, which can be pretty quick. But if you wanted to be able to get a lot of sentiments at once, you can use pre-printed sentiments. You can get stickers. These I bought at my local Joann's. You can get um, pre-printed sentiments from companies like Paper Rose or Simon Says Stamp. These are great because they can be black with white writing to save you the trouble of embossing. You could technically print out on black too, but that uses a lot of ink, so it might not be more cost effective than simply buying them. However, you do get to pick your own sentiments when you make your own sentiment strips. So I opened a Google Doc and oops, upside down, <laughs> I opened a Google Doc and I put some sayings into columns. Then I chose a color to go with them based off of the color palette I knew I would be using today, but I knew I would use again and again because there's a lot of sentiments on here. But I can cut these apart quickly and store them for future use. So let me show you a little bit more about that. This will also be a downloadable PDF that you can get at JessCrafts.com, just like you can get all of these templates. You'll be able to get yourself some printable sentiments so today. I can take this, I printed them off on cardstock. So you just print the PDF. You could do it on plain printer paper, but I do think that cardstock gives a better touch on a card. And this is even the very inexpensive cardstock that you can pick up at Walmart. And I have found that it always goes to the printer great. So now I have this whole column. And if you want, you can give yourself more space on the sides. You can do a fishtail or a more interesting cut. I'm just gonna cut them all plain today because often that's enough, but it's totally up to you. Then I can just do a quick cut in between each sentiment. Again, there's ways that you can make this more fancy, but today's about time saving. Bonus tip. Okay, you have all of these sentiments you've cut apart. A lot of them. You only need one or two for the cards that you're working on. What do you do with the rest? I made my own little storage system here. I took an old sturdy cell phone box any kind of sturdy box packaging that you get, and I can make a custom insert for it. Now, if you don't wanna go through all that, they at Tailored Expressions sell these containers that hold sentiments. It's specifically for their sentiment strips that you can get at their website where you stamp a bunch of sentiments at one time and die cut a bunch of sentiments at one time. I'll show you what theirs look like. So these are the ones that I've stamped and cut, and that's super fast solution as well. But if you want to make your own storage, I'll show you quickly how I did this. I cut one piece of sturdy cardstock to the exact size of the bottom of my box. Then I took some more sturdy cardstock and I decided how wide I wanted the section to be and then how tall I wanted the divider to be. In this case, I kept it simple and just did one inch and one inch. Then I, so, that means I have a two inch wide piece of cardstock 
for the bottom and then for the, for the divider. Then the length is determined by the length of your box. In this case, it was around three inches or so. I'm gonna add some adhesive just to the bottom. A super strong adhesive would be perfect for this because you do want it to be able to hold up over time. And then I'm just gonna butt it up to the last divider that I made. And of course you can make all of these different sizes. I made mine uniform so that I can hold sentiments continuously, but you do whatever you want because you could also be putting your pre-cut, pre-printed images or ones you've already stamped and colored in and cut out and saved for the future because I have a ton of those too. Then put it back inside your box. I put all of my sending hugs sentiments there. I can put all of your, my you are specials, whatever sentiments I have. And then when I'm ready to pull a sentiment out, the flexible dividers actually help because I can easily get in there and just push this out of the way. And if this ever starts getting kind of worn down over time, I made it easily, cheaply with the stuff that I had on hand so I can just remake any dividers or just remake the whole thing if need be. Now I'm ready to finish off this card using all of my time-saving tips today. I'll add a little bit of adhesive, pop on the sentiment, and there you go. Still a beautiful handmade card. And remember, only use which of these work best for you. If you love to color, don't use the pre-printed images. Of course, stamp and color your own. But maybe you don't really care about the sentiment, so save time by using a pre-printed. If you found this video inspiring, please subscribe to get more tips and tutorials. Find links in the video description to the products that I mentioned today. Head over to JessCrafts.com to get your templates for all kinds of paper sizes and card sizes. Get your free printable sentiment. And I'll share another video that you can check out. Have an awesome day. Bye.